Now let's go to part three. Um, this is our interview with Jojo Valenzuela and how he became a success. Now, Jojo, you started the bartending business here in the East Coast. And how did you graduate from that? And now with your concept of two different uh, restaurants and two different uh, menus for one particular place? Um, great question. I started bartending in 97. Um, again, as more of a best of a way for me to make a living so I could pursue my music career. Um, and then when I became a father, Ashton like switched. Literally, it was just a switch of a button that uh, the, the passion of music literally like, disappeared and then it completely went into the beverage side, you know, uh, learning about more about wines, uh, how they're made, uh, how to taste, wine taste the wines, how to figure out where it's from, what year it was made. And then I, I geeked out on that, as a, for lack of a better term. And then, you know, like started breaking down cocktails to the tea why it was made this way, like, you know, get, like gathered all the history about cocktails. So the passion, like, switched because of that. And then suddenly there's this drive of knowing, learning a lot more about the craft, uh, beverage in particular. And with that, I started uh, working for, like, very passionate chefs, like the best chefs in DC. And uh, I started picking their brains out, how, how their mind uh, worked in creating food, flavors, definitely learned a whole lot from them, I'm very thankful. And then I started applying that into cocktails until, you know, I keep on making cocktails. I, 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 everybody's now, like, you know, like there was an era, there was a time in, in, in Washington DC where it was such a boom like, that everybody was like making their own from scratch and it was great. And um, luckily, I'm one of the biggest proponents of that. I supported all my, my bartender friends. And it, I ended up, I mean, I've been consulting on and off since 2001, 2002. And full time, I did it in 2015. Uh, literally, like I stopped working in restaurants and I just, uh, I, I would pick up a, a bartending shift here and there. but. Like, with like okay, the whole money thing was like coming from consulting, like you know, helping places, bars, and restaurants create their own bar menu, pick their spirits, pick their beers, train their staff. I've been teaching uh, alcohol awareness classes since 2009. Eventually, I end up teaching surf safe classes, which are more for um, uh, kitchens. Like, you know, like you, you make sure that. They're practicing all the, the uh, healthy uh, way of, of, uh, of, what do you call this, uh, executing stuff in the kitchen, make sure, you know, it's to the health code. Um, yeah, so that, that did a whole lot. Till next thing you know, I started cooking again. Like, uh, when my mom was still around, like, you know, I asked her for, for a couple of uh, recipes here and there. and. Uh, uh, funny, like you know, like she laughed at me a couple of times, like really, yeah, you were so <laughs> proud that you made nilaga. It's so easy. I'm like, really? <laughs> I thought that was hard. And um, next thing you know, since uh, I've developed my palate uh, for wines and for food, like you know, trying the best food here in DC on a regular basis from like different chefs, it inspired me to, you know what? Yes, I'm gonna follow my heritage, like, you know, I'm Filipino. There's really not a whole lot of Filipino food in DC. I started helping out, like you know, all the, the Filipino pop-ups that were around. Me being like the bartender of like the, the best chefs in DC, uh, it was great, you know. Um, until like I started doing my own, like I started cooking my own. Like uh, I did a project with my brother and my sister, and it was highly successful. We started catering for different um, restaurant people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and uh, and people liked it a lot. So I'm like, all right, so I guess we do have something um, to offer until, you know, uh, hey, like, you know, opportunities arrived. And I, I started like, you know, creating like plans on uh, what to do. And it worked out. Uh, like a couple of uh, friends of mine like, told me about this opportunity 
like, hey, here you go, here's a sports bar, you want to do something with it? I'm like, uh, do I have a choice? Uh, yeah, maybe like, you know, we, we can we can take over the sports bar because like, you know, uh, this owner is leaving, he said he's going to start sell like the concept. I'm like, we can buy the concept and then you start your project soon after that. And um, some of the plans didn't ha pan out like, you know, exactly how it was told. So we had to come up with a with a quick plan, and uh, we we turned it around. I said, "Well, why don't we open as a as a sports bar, and then I'm gonna squeeze in some Filipino items there, or actually international food, international recipes, or what were the first plan was." And the second floor, I was like, "Yeah, eventually, let's uh, turn that into a lounge or a um, a dining focused uh, concept." And it was a it was a very bad time of the year to open for sports because uh, we opened the like the day before Super Bowl, so we were busy for that uh, day, and then there was nothing. <laughs> and um, but I did have like some Filipino items on the on the menu. There were like four or five different menu items. Sisig was one of them. I, I made like a Filipino barbecue bowl. Um, I had beef pares, I got lumpia, so that's enough, like, you know, that's enough, like, Filipino signature there. And luckily, uh, we had a really nice review from Washington Post, like, by Tim Carmen. Um, he came in, he wrote some really nice things about us, and uh, it attracted some, um, some Filipinos out there, and also, like, you know, all the neighborhood uh, places in the, in the area, they, they started supporting us. So we, we were able to survive the first few months because of the Filipino food, more so than the sports bar food. Mm -hmm. And then March Madness happened, the, the Capitals went far in the playoffs. We, we had some people for, for those few days, but uh, I, I would have to say that the biggest success uh, or the biggest reason we are successful right now uh, is because of the Filipino food. So. Thank you.